what? Are, all right. So it was originally thought when, you know, this was discovered that mm -hmm. maybe an asteroid, but then a coma was spotted. What happened there that one observation said, well, I didn't see anything. And then another observation said coma. Coma are really hard to find, especially one this week. This coma is not very big. It's not coming out in a tail. It's just a sort of fuzzy cloud around the object. And in order to detect that, you have to have a telescope with small enough pixels that you can make out the difference of it's fuzzy right here and it's not fuzzy right next to it. And I think a lot of the initial observations are designed for large field of views and are, do not have a, this, the pixel resolution necessary to pull that out. So it's really just an observational constraint that it's really hard to detect a coma. And as we get better and better telescopes, well, uh, not always say better and better, as we get telescopes with more and more pixels per square degree, looking at this thing, we'll be able to see more and more of that coma. And hopefully we'll eventually get to the point where we can determine the difference between the central object and the coma, because you need to be able to do that to measure how big it actually is. Yeah, and like we said earlier, like the field is very crowded in its current position. So being able to pick out the coma from all of that, it requires some reduction in we, there is a good image inside of the discovery paper, the uh, Daryl's first author paper that he just submitted and is on archive. There's a a good image from the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope that you could see the activity a bit better than if when you're just looking at the crowded field. And you can compare that to the Atlas image, which is just, you can't see any activity in that. It's just a, a dot amongst the amongst the various other dots right and so you really need this sort of high precision from a, a larger telescope with does that design for focusing on a single object from something like uh, uh cfh and something like that to be actually be able to det detect these things now will that that angle we're seeing it, it in you know is sitting in the uh in the galactic plane will that get better as it moves through the solar system when you have you know, the ability to take better observations as if it moves out of that. Yeah, it certainly will. And then especially after it moves away from its closest approach with the sun and it's like at a higher solar elongation, it, it will be easier. Like, I guess from Earth, it will be easier after that period, but also from the perspective of uh, space telescopes as well. I, I don't know if Aster has anything to add to that, but We'll get a lot better observations when it moves out of the galactic plane, and then we'll lose observations as it moves behind the sun, and then we'll get some, we'll just keep on gaining them and losing them as the moon moves around. Mm -hmm. And then after it passes the sun, unfortunately, it'll be behind the sun for its closest approach, so we can't make any observations then. Right. But after a perihelion passage, we should be able to get some decent observations as it leaves the solar system and then eventually just disappears. There is some discussion of turning some of the telescopes on Mars satellites to look at this object when it's at perihelion, because it, Mars will not be behind the sun. So that'll be very cool, but we'll have to talk to NASA and somebody else will have to talk to NASA and see if we can get that working. Now, this object is really, as we were talking, really moving through here. So at, at the speed that it's at, I don't see how we could catch up to it to get a you know closer observation. So. Is, is there any possibility, any plan, or is this just going to unfold too fast before you can plan something? And would it be useful in the future to build a reactive system in space? And I know there's such a thing as for asteroids is, is in the works for interstellar objects. In other words, can we put something out there ready to go when something is detected and get, uh, get samples of it or something along those lines? Yeah, so this object is obviously too fast and we would not have the mission parameters we have to have when working on a mission for years already to be able to catch this there is some discussion of showing that there could exist such a mission that could have caught this object but that mission does not exist right now so there's no way it's going to be caught right now but like you said there have been people talking about doing things like comet interceptor and other missions like that looking for opportunities to go out and grab comets when they get very close to the Earth. So there has been discussion of a mission like that for this object. And it's quite possible that if there's a 
excuse me, if there's a third, a fourth ISO detected while comet interceptor is online, we may be sending comet interceptor to 4i instead. That's up to the ESA and, and all that. But there's been a lot of discussion after Muamua that we should develop a mission like this. The funding just hasn't been there right now. And this mission has never been approved. I think we should do something like that. But that's sort of the, the problem we run into. Is there's a lot of things that astronomers think we should do and that the funding just does not exist to do. And so it'd be very cool if we could do it, but we're in a, in a tricky situation with, you know, Congress and NASA have not approved the budget necessary to build that mission. Now, my last question for today is this. With um, Umumua, obviously there were very odd attributes to it that led to, you know, increasingly spiraling out their theories as to how to explain it. But yet Borisov, nothing special, you know, as far as anything peculiar, it's just an interstellar comet, basically. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in the observations of, of uh, 3i that is unusual and difficult to understand? Or does this appear to just basically conform to everything you would expect from such an object? So far, it looks like a normal comet. We have not seen anything that I'm not aware of anything in any of the observations that is difficult to explain by saying it's a comet like Borisov. We don't have a ton of data, so we may find more mysteries as we go into it, but it is certainly much less weird than a Muamua and currently seems entirely consistent with being a, another version of something like Borisov. Dessa, do you, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I would totally agree. And wait, and in the coming weeks as we're getting more data as 3i goes through the system and gets closer to the sun maybe we could see something interesting happening with the tail or as it develops and the, some of those materials start to evaporate but so far it's looking pretty standard i agree with aster all right thank you both for joining us today and i wish you great luck and i can't wait to find out more about our third discovered and confirmed interstellar object Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for having us and keep an eye out for both of our papers in the, I don't know how what your time frame is, Tessa, but in the coming weeks for me at least. Yeah, for sure. Me too. In the coming weeks, yeah. Yeah, so it will be very exciting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.